JC, welcome to Urban Knife Guy, where we explore the urban lifestyle and jungle survival. We are back in the jungle, but I'm not going to do any bushcrafting today. I thought I'd do something different. I'll share with you, for the very first time, my full bushcraft and survival kit. So if you want to know what's in my pack and on my belt, do stick around. First, if you watch this channel regularly but have not subscribed, please do so to help the channel out. And if you'd like to support the channel even more, do check out my shop links in the description or pinned comment. Thanks a lot. So this is my full bushcraft and survival kit. It consists of, I guess, different components. You can say it's modular. I do have my main belt which I've shown one version before, but it's been upgraded significantly over the year. I've of course got my parang, and if you've watched this channel before, you know I always sling my parang. I do not belt carry or put it in my pack. And then I have my pack itself, which is a day pack, and uh, strapped to it, the uh, molly system is actually my cook kit. So let's uh, spread out a ground sheet and uh, let's go through all of these things bit by bit. And here we have my belt kit with my parang on a sling. Those who follow my channel know that I'll always carry a parang into the jungle and I would sling it. I do not carry it on the belt. And this is the Tops Yukari. And I've talked about this particular knife before. It's a really great machete. And I consider the parang the most important all-purpose knife you can bring to the jungle. And I have a tactical sling. And through the belt loop, I actually have a plastic carabiner. Uh, so this allows me to detach this uh, very easily uh, if I need. So that's uh, how I carry my parang. And uh, I sometimes when I do come to a campsite, I will sling it up. If not, it will be on me and my belt is always on me all the time unless maybe I'm sleeping. So let's have a look at the belt itself. It is what is considered a combat belt and combat tacticians generally use it this way because there are two belts. There's an inner belt which is uh, Velcro on one side and the outer belt which is this uh, green one that you see that is Velcroed onto the inner belt. And the way you're supposed to use it is actually to wear the Velcro belt on, the, on your pants through the belt loops and then over the belt loops you would kind of stick this green or outer belt and then lock it in place. So this is allow you to get your gear on and off very easily. And there's also a degree of comfort. Personally, I do not do that. I have a separate belt on me for my pants. And this I just use as a kind of a two belt system, but it's, it's quite comfortable and that's the way I use it. So the great thing about battle belts is that all these uh, nylon straps which allow molly attachment systems to go on which is how I attach all my different pieces of gear. Now starting off over here, my gloves are important for jungle hiking, bashing as well as bushcrafting so that just goes on to this holder over here. This is a Maxpedition dump pouch. So I believe it's an ammo pouch uh, for collecting ammo after maybe at that range or on your field and you're shooting, you want to collect, collect your shells. But I think it's a great way just to carry emergency items. Or if you're collecting tinder or food, you can collect it here. And in my case, I'm thinking in terms of water survival, if I need to collect water, if you've got bags of water, it's hard for you to carry it around you know, on your hands and try to navigate the jungle. You can actually put it inside here. So really useful, as you saw, it holds up really small on the belt, doesn't get in the way until you need it. Over here, I've got my water bottle. This is really just a plastic military style canteen. And I believe I use it more of nostalgia from my scouting days and army days back from the 80s and 90s. So it works perfectly for me. So never changed that, although I did change, of course, the bottle. And I've got an aluminum uh, canteen holder inside. This is really again for emergency and survival so I can collect and boil water if I need. But water puree tabs inside over here. This is on the back so this is a scout carry back pouch and in the front pouch I've got some knife sharpening gear. So I've got a diamond plate it's a 1000 grit and 400 grit and then I've got leather strop with compound on it and this is so that if I ever need to feel sharpen my knives it's there for me and I can tell you honestly I have never needed to do it I generally spend four to six, six hours at a time in the jungle and I don't use my knives so much that it becomes blunt and I need to feel sharpen but it's there for emergencies and survivals 
now generally when i am doing bushcrafting i'm going out i know where i'm going i know the area well and actually a lot of this stuff may be seen as overkill however for expeditions where i'm going to places that do not know unfamiliar territory whether in this country or another country then this is stuff that i definitely need to have with me because if i get lost or get into any bad situations i need gear with me and to me this is a good practice and habit to carry this on me uh, get used to the weight get used to where they are so if i ever need them in a real situation i'm prepared for that now the back pouch is a bit different in terms of the stuff i carry from the last time actually now just carry two bags and the first one here is a max position micro pouch it's kind of an emergency or slash emergency tool pouch because i do carry another emergency pouch in my pack so this is more of i guess a tool pouch so i've got cable ties over there and then inside here flashlight i've got a blanket emergency blanket which is can also be a signal blanket because of the orange i have another plastic bag with coffee filters for water purification on the top of water i've got this so this is something you don't really see much and it's basically a plastic tube now the reason i carry this is for retrieving water particularly from bamboo so a lot of times uh, you can get clean water from bamboo because it filters in the segments so if you can find bamboo which is a uh, very uh, predominant in a tropical jungle you can get water now typically a lot of times people would have to chop down the entire bamboo shoot to access the water i think by making cuts and then putting this tube in and sucking it out uh, it's going to be much more efficient and then if you want to collect water in your bottle you can also again suck and just to phys due to physics the water will come out and can fill your bottle so i just found this very lightweight small piece of kit i believe this is kind of like a surgical tubing uh, but quite heavy duty so that goes in there and if I ever need to get water from bamboo, uh, I don't have to chop it down. I can just make cuts, put this in and get the water out. Safety pins, some cordage, a whistle, flagging tape with a sharpie. This is if I get lost, I can uh, wrap this around trees as markers, write down uh, bearings, degrees, timing, any pertinent information for myself in case I circle back or for rescue workers. And I've got some fat wood for fire making capabilities. I do have a whole pack of um, cotton infused with um, petroleum jelly as a tinder. I've got different uh, jute rope cordage including natural jute and wax jute different sizes. I've got uh, a ferro rod with a magnesium uh, striker over here so this uh, you can get scrapings and then strike it for the fire i've got a needle and thread in a straw and basically that's all for fire making capabilities and uh, this is basically a signal mirror made of plastic it's got a film on it so i take it out i'll take the film out only if i need to use it this is extremely lightweight and will not break on me in this kind of kit in my back pouch is my first aid kit and this is pretty comprehensive i've showed this before so i do not want to go into too much detail but it's got everything that you need from a snake bite kit antiseptic cream i've got extra lens contact lens that is i've got electrolyte salts i've got different pills and of course whole bunch of bandages uh, eye drops super glue and uh yeah just all kind of uh first aid stuff that you might need i used to carry a the first aid pouch on my pack but i realized actually it's it's more important to carry it on me at all times and that's why i moved it to the belt all right let's move on now this is to my right but back to my right and this is my belt knife this is the tops brachimo so i think uh, really my favorite bushcraft survival knife i won't get into it i've talked about this knife before as well and on my sheath i have my swiss army knife which serves as my kind of a, just a small folder and multi-tool. This is the camper, so it's got a saw. I've also got the tinder and fur rod inside over here. And I've modified the tweezers as well. As you can see, it's shaped to a point. I use the Dremel for that, and that's uh, ready for stings to be more effective. And this is all on a custom sheath that's right over here. And then to the side and this is really on my right is what i consider my administration 
pouch or admin pouch and you notice the way it is if you if i'm carrying it right so this is my front now you notice the knife is actually hidden and this was on purpose now even though i come to this jungle which uh, hardly anyone comes here but at the start of the trail because it's still a forest reserve you will get members of the public and uh, people might see you and if I have this set up and I have a knife on me, I want it hidden so that generally people do not see it if I'm facing them and they don't feel threatened in any way. Uh, when I do enter the forest reserve, my parang will be in my pack. And that's purely so that members of the public don't see it and get too worried. But once I'm inside and I know that there are not many people around anymore, I will take it out and I'll sling it. All right, so this side pack over here, you can see I've got a Kydex holder. This as a lighter so this is just a big lighter with some duct tape wrapped around um, my i would say my primary fire source if i need to make a fire if i want to have fun and challenge myself i've got my ferro rod over here this is my light my fire ferro rod and then over here is something interesting this is basically uh, some pace beads it's for you to count off your paces uh, so that you need to know how many paces that say you take to cover 100 meters and when you're doing navigation in unfamiliar territory if you just want to challenge yourself you, know, you might have a map on you or if you don't then you would use this in conjunction with a compass which i have over here as well um, and those are pace beads and inside the pouch itself I don't keep it stuffed the whole idea is just to keep some admin items here that i can access uh, easily my silky pocket boy the saw is very important always here some paracord insect repellent and i've got first aid dressing and uh these are hemostatic granules so i will be changing to gauze in a while but this is really to stop bleeding in emergency situations and that's it nothing else in that pouch now we come over here you see this grimlock d-link kind of holder and this is here as a utility item i just find this so useful to hook things hang things uh like the saw i'll just give you an example if i'm have the saw and i'm actually moving around camp i'm sawing stuff and doing stuff i do not want to put it back zip up the pouch again so all i can do is just put that through the grimlock d-link and right there and then that just hangs there if I need. And uh, if I ever bring a hatchet out, I have a similar setup where I can hang the hatchet out from there as well. Now, finally, I've got a small pouch over here. And this, as you might have guessed, and this is to remind me what's inside, it's a compass. And that's where I keep my Kamenga lensatic compass. And this can be used in conjunction with the pace beads if needed uh, to sight bearings and to determine how far I'm going. And then, of course, noting down uh, the distance if I need. And I also actually have one more tool over here. This is the Leatherman Squirt. Uh, there's a small compartment over here, so I found, you know, just keep it over here. I've actually used this quite a number of times out in the field. You'd think a small keychain multi tool may not be useful, but I've used it to try to pull straps of gear with the pliers. And the small knives can be very useful when you need very, very small, delicate work, mainly for gear maintenance, I've found. So that's my belt and that's my sling. Let's have a look at my pack. Here we have my day pack for bushcraft and survival. And I say day pack because it's not meant for multi-day long expeditions. It's designed for the day. Definitely I can do it overnight with this and, and can survive overnight if I do need. But my intention is generally never to stay overnight uh, unless intended. So this is a day pack. It's the Condor Assault Pack, the small one, 21 liters. And basically it's just up to here this is a water bottle pouch which is an addition and that is strapped via molly attachment to the bottom straps over here so that forms my full kit and what i like about this particular pack is there are many compartments uh, there's a small one over here in the top medium or small to medium one over here medium one in the center one large one at the back and uh here you've got a pocket where you can put a hydration bladder or i use it to keep my poncho unless i'm going for a really long hike and i know i need a three liter bladder of water then i would put it inside and it can expand and give all these straps to adjust to how big the pack is now my goal is never to load up my pack so that it's so full and heavy 
I mean, this is 21 liters. I wouldn't want to carry 20 liters all the time. I'm no longer 20 years old where I can carry a pack and just hike 10 kilometers. Uh, and even then, that wasn't a good experience. So I would say this is 10 kg or less in general because a lot of the weight is on my belt as well. Uh, but I'll show you what I have inside. So right here at the top is where I used to carry my first aid kit, but no longer. I carry this kind of a emergency supplement two pouch. Uh, so this original was on my belt in the back pouch, but I felt there was a lot of redundancy. I didn't need to carry so much. I just needed bare essentials on my belt that I could survive with if I really need. And if I really want to supplement more gear, then I have it on my pack. And because it is quite heavy and bulky, this is a Maxpedition Mini. And I've got more cable ties over here. And inside, you can see a collection of items. I'll just quickly breeze through. I've got a Leatherman rebar. I've got a survival lighter, which I've taught how to put together before. Paracord, more fat wood, paper clips. I've got a power bank uh, for the phone. Another first aid dressing. And uh, over here, I've got even more fire making capabilities in terms of tinder. So really, this is just to supplement that survival pouch which is on my back pouch uh, just a bit more gear here if i need and in the front over here i carry just various accessories you can see in fact it's quite uh, empty i've got paracord if i were to have uh, 10 stakes or more paracord i will put it inside here i've got a write in the rain uh, notebook I've got a pen with a fisher sp uh, space in cartridge you can write in the rain as well i've got more sharpies these are mini sharpies in different colors if i have a map and i want to mark trails and stuff then i want different colors as well and then over here i've got different sorts of cordage from jute rope to we call this comscot but you call it uh bank line or it's basically ni braided nylon uh, so just all kind of utilities uh, this is where i would put uh, any kind of utility items uh, depending on what I intend to do for that day and then we come to the middle section over here more utility as well uh, this is my water survival kit or filtration kit so this is a Sawyer mini uh, filter and all the different attachments and that's if I ever run out of water I do know that in this jungle there are different water sources of course it needs to be bought or purified so I have this uh, but I also carry in addition to the bottle of my belt I've got another bottle this is a flat bottle doesn't take up much space uh, but we've got 750 ml of water here and this is uh, more for cooking and extra water if I need as I said if I'm going for a long hike uh, I generally may not bring the cook kit but then I'll change the water bladder and I won't bring this as well. So this is additional water, but in a flat water bottle. Very important for the jungle, mosquito coil. I've got one burning actually now. And this is, especially when I stay in a camp like this for several hours, I just want comfort. So keep the mozzies away, even though I have repellent on as well. Uh, over here, I've got some, uh, you can't really see this, but this is hard tech biscuits so it's a biscuit high density military grade and you eat a bit and it fills you up the first time i ever ate this would have been in the 80s in the army and that's before singapore switched to the modern combat rations and uh i actually liked it at the time a lot of people didn't like it but i liked it because a little will keep me full and uh, you won't need to go to the toilet in the field so much with that and again that's that nothing much inside over here the main compartment is where i would carry i've got like plastic bags uh, for either water collection or just general stuff i've got wet wipes i've got uh, these kind of other plastic bags uh, but this is more of what i consider a trash bag so i collect my trash and then bring it out of the jungle i am going to be testing this new mre just for fun it's uh, made in malaysia so that's why i have it here i'll be testing that out uh, i also actually put my sitting pad or my kneeling pad inside here I'm actually using it right now as I film, so that's why it's not inside the pack. And then again, nothing else here. I will keep utility items if I need. So I would say that's uh, basically it. Uh, on the back, as I've mentioned before, you can put a hydration bladder, but I keep my poncho, uh, which is also actually modified so that I can use it as a mini shelter as well. 
So I don't bring a full top out all the time. Uh, I do bring a ground sheet as uh, you can see the black one that this is laid on. So that doesn't take up much space as well. But for a full, let's say 3 meter by 3 meter or 10 foot by 10 foot top, I only bring it out if I intend to build a shelter or I knowingly am going out for a long time and I know it's going to rain then, and I intend to build a shelter, then I would do that. All right, let's get to the cook kit, which is over there. So I've moved my bag around so that we can focus on the cook kit. And this is it, a water bottle pouch as I've mentioned, attached. And I've got some morale patches here. This is to remind me what's inside because I'm very forgetful. Let's look at the front pouch first. And this is where I keep my fire kit. Over here I've got a Fresnel lens. It's a pretty large one, which I like. I do not really like the credit card size ones. Don't find them as effective. This nice and big. Now I'll share the link in the description below if you like to get that. And this is my fire kit. Now I won't go through the entire kit because I've shared this in the previous video. You can check out the link as well above or in the description. But everything from matches to jute to all kinds of ignition systems and tools and tinder sources, uh, everything's in here. Really comprehensive. Um, it's overbuilt, overthought, but really it's also just for fun, but more importantly to practice different fire making techniques uh, when I do my bushcrafting trips. Uh, but really comprehensive kit on this tin. And then I do have a fire bellow over here. Let's see if I can get that out. So it's extendable uh, to help get a fire going. And I also have this pot stand, which is part of my uh, cook kit, which I'll show you right now. In this main compartment, I have my wood stove. I don't carry alcohol stove or gas stove. Uh, I just like a wood stove personally. Also very lightweight. Uh, have this just so that uh, it's fireproof material if I ever need it. When I put the wood stove over, it's made of titanium. Uh, I've done a video on this as well, so you can check that out. And I always carry wood chips uh, with me because if the jungle is always really wet and damp and I can't always get uh, dry wood unless I spend a lot of time processing, which means uh, looking for standing dead wood, cutting it down, uh, splitting it, getting really the dry insides, feather sticking, getting shavings, collecting uh, kindling, and, you know, all that. It's all part of a uh, great experience and fun if that is the process but if I'm really out and my intention is not to spend so much time processing wood I want to do other bushcrafting tasks and I just want to boil water make a meal uh, then I would cheat I would use some of my prepared sauces from my fire kit as well as the wood chips and I get a fire going really quickly and that lasts easily an hour and then further inside I have my Stanley cook set so I know in time uh, this might burn out or break and I'll put a metal ring but as of now it's held up so really no reason to do that. I've got a little washcloth or cleaning cloth, I've uh, got a, a bar, just kind of a granola bar, got my cutlery and then inside here I've got another aluminum cup. So that's kind of my whole kit for me to boil water, make coffee or make food and depending what sort of food I carry, uh, like I do have an MRE here, which I'm going to test out. And all I need to do is boil water and then pour it into the pouch. Uh, so that's basically my cook kit. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this look at my full bushcraft and survival kit. Uh, this is how the folded up ground sheet looks like. And that's the sitting pad underneath it. And I also carry on me in my pocket a towel. This is one foot by two foot. Uh, it's those sort of quick drying, high absorbent towels. And I always carry something of very contrasting color to the jungle so that it can be used as a signal flag if needed as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this experience going through my kit. I know it's a long video, but hopefully my journey of putting this together might give you ideas and help you with your own kit. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content in general, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.